Welcome everybody. Welcome to Center Stage. Uh, my name is Rajiv and today I have with me Marion Favors, Director of Customer Support from Carl Stroh's Endoscopy America. Welcome Marion to the show. Thank you, Rajiv. Thanks for taking the time. Carl Stroh's has been around since 1945, a long time. You've been with the company for nearly 28 years, is that correct? Yes, that is correct. I actually started when I was 15, Wajib. So oh my it goodness. kind of gives you some perspective. <laughs> so so let, let, let's start there because that is a fascinating fact in and of itself. You don't, you know, nowadays most people don't last uh, more than, you know, two to five years at a company. Um, so tell me, how did, you, how did you get started at 15 and what has kept you there for nearly 28 years? And you know what, Rajiv, I was really being facetious. Um, I was trying not to share my age, but I didn't actually start at 15, but I was really young. Um, I'm sure you're so, young. Yeah. You know, it's, it, it's so funny. Um, I actually um, started with this organization. I can't say that um, I targeted the organization and I was pumped about starting. I actually was working with Ashton Tate, uh, a software company that went out of business. And one of my friends got hired at Carl Stortz, and she said, hey, I think this will be a great opportunity for you. And so I came over, and um, okay. I did move from a customer service role into this, in a customer service role, but that's kind of how I got started. But okay. from there, my career has just bloomed. Got it. And give us a little background on the company. They've been around since 1945, and I read that they have over 15,000 products. So just a little insight on the company would be helpful, I think. Yeah. So we are a, a medical device company and we manufacture and distribute medical devices for minimally invasive surgery. Our parent company is in Germany um, and uh, we have some divisions here um, in uh, North America where we uh, manufacture some of our video equipment uh, and uh, also uh, cameras and um, uh, some instrumentation. So as far as the company, uh, we basically uh, provide products for surgeons to be able to um, perform surgeries uh, where it's less invasive. And that's our whole strategy is to uh, try to uh, provide products so that uh, patients can heal a lot quicker. Got it. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. and, and so as director of customer support, well, what does is, what is your sort of typical day look like? Oh my gosh. You know, when you are in the service industry, it is, and, and I'm responsible for service, it is, you're going from one issue to another. It's, it's always putting out fires. And I don't care how proactive you are, you can't always prepare for the customers because customers are different. And yep. so depending on what their needs are, then you're gonna have to try to find solutions. So my day is usually, I'm, I'm moving uh, throughout the uh, entire day and uh, trying to find first off solutions uh, for the customers. I'm working with the field. I'm working with marketing. I'm also working with my team. So it is just, I'm moving a thousand miles an hour. So, so when you say you're working with the field and the marketing, give us some examples on mm -hmm. how you interact with the field and marketing and how are they supporting you and what does that interaction look like? Okay, so as far as the field, uh, and, and when I say field, I'm talking about our Salesforce, um, mm -hmm. all of our yeah, service uh, organization. So mm -hmm. I, my department uh, actually is the lifeline for the sales team. When uh, they are preparing to uh, send an order in, they're sending it directly to my uh, department because we're respon responsible for order management. And so we are actually bringing that deal to fruition. We work okay. with all of the strategic deals and uh, that's what we do. And, and then uh, as far as the service team, we're working with them to try to assist them with getting uh, broken products sent back in to be repaired. Got it. And, and, and tell me about your relationship with marketing. How is marketing sort of supporting what you do from a services perspective, from a support perspective? Um, as, as far as marketing, so any program that is introduced to the customer, customer support has to understand that program and we have to support it. We're mm -hmm. the face of the, the, of the organization, so 
we work directly with marketing to make sure that we understand programs and that we can actually support them when they're rolled out. Got it. Got it. So, I mean, being at one place again for 28 years is astounding. Um, what, what, what really drives you? Like what, what sort of, when you wake up in the morning, what drives you to get in and knowing that you've been doing this for so long, like what, what excites you about, about your, about your, about your work? Wow. That's first off, that's a great question. And, and it may sound a little weird, but I get so fired up about solving problems. And some people shrink back when it comes to solving problems. But honestly, I don't even feel like I'm doing my job if I'm not tackling some type of problem. That's what I'm here for, to solve yeah. problems. And that's what fires me up. It's amazing. I, I mean, I can sense the passion that you definitely love what you're doing. You're a problem solver. You look forward to the challenge and every day you don't know what to expect, but you're ready, game on, to, to face any challenge and, pro and problem and solve it. Yes. And, and so, you know, we, before we, we sort of, before I press record, we were talking about, again, your domain expertise being in this field for so long and a book that you recently wrote uh, called Service Revolution. So tell, yes. tell the audience and tell me a little bit about the book. Um, what, what, what does that entail? And, and yeah, what, what is, what's, the, what's, what's behind it? All right. So, well, first off, I have to tell you that um, I actually feel like service has gone to hell in a handbasket. And um, companies, that, companies are not really providing the type of service that they should to their customers. And I just think that there needs to be a service revolution with respect to how we interact with our customers. And the service revolution actually starts with the minds of the employees. And so okay. that's where it starts. And, um, and so just to give you a little bit perspective, um, I believe that most companies, the way we have structured uh, companies is that we take an outside in approach versus a, uh, uh, I'm sorry, we take an inside out approach versus an outside in approach. We're uh, more concerned about what works for us than what works for the customer. And I think that needs to shift. I think that companies need to take an outside in approach and they need to focus on what works for the customers. They need to put processes and programs in place that make it easy for the customer to do business with them. They need customer to try to first. reduce customer effort. Customer, customer centric. is always first, mm -hmm. absolutely. And Got so uh, with the book, I just talk about, you know, as we have, we've gone through multiple uh, uh, revolutions and uh, we've gone through the agricultural revolution where we mass produce food, right? And it changed the way we actually uh, live in the world. We moved mm -hmm. from a nomadic type lifestyle to living in communities. And right. then that gave, uh, gave way to the industrial revolution where we produce mass products. And now we're in the information revolution, right? Mm -hmm. And um, the information revolution actually gives the customer back control. And the other two revolutions, the companies were in control. And so now customers, they know everything they need to know about a company. Before they even mm -hmm. do business with a company, they're reading reviews. They're trying to figure out how does this company treat their customers? You know, what, what, what is, the, is a product a quality product? Do they, does the company stand behind their product? So right. it is time for us to make sure that we catch up with where the customer is today. Love it, love it. And where can people find your book, Services Revolution? Um, they can actually find it on Amazon. It is okay. um, right now it's an ebook. Okay. And uh, you can purchase an ebook, but it will we will have the hard copy available uh, on July the twenty third. Well, congratulations! That's that's amazing and a huge accomplishment. Um, let me shift gears back to your your current role, and let's talk about okay. some of the challenges when you're planning your customer support strategy. Uh, how do you mm -hmm. sort of uh, deal with challenges and overcome it from a strategic perspective? Got it. So I can tell you one of the biggest challenges um, for service leaders is just keeping everyone locked in step. So um, customers are expecting for companies to deliver on their promises. They're expecting for companies to solve their day-to-day -day problems. And trying to deliver on those promises can be kind of tough because there are some things that are, without, that, that are not within your control. So mm -hmm. if I'm dealing with a department that I'm relying on to get information to me, then that can be a challenge. So one of the biggest challenges, I would say, is just keeping everyone together, 
keeping um, everyone on the same page with respect to how we service our customers. And I can tell you, it's like herding cats, but that is the biggest challenge of a service leader. And, and so in terms of that sort of like transparent communication and keeping everyone on the same mm -hmm. page, how do you do that? And how big is your team, by the way? Uh, my team, uh, we have a total of about, we're about 85 strong. Okay. And that includes the leaders and, you know, and all the, the, the folks that are actually managing the customer experience. Mm -hmm. um, and then with respect to how do we do that? Well, I think it's so important for organizations to have operational service level agreements. Okay. They need to have something that they're beholden to, something that is that they can be held accountable uh, mm -hmm. for. So we uh, have installed service levels agreement. If I need something from, say, my accounts receivable department, we have a service level around um, how much time it takes for them to get me that information. Got it. Got it. Okay. And that was implemented in-house? Did you sort of spearhead that initiative or? It was implemented in-house and it was actually spearheaded by a committee of okay. people. And, okay. um, and so I was on that committee. Got it. Got it. Um, so... We, we kind of touched on this, but what do you, what do you really enjoy most about uh, working at crawl stores? What has been your sort of most significant achievement you think today being there for such a long period of time? Wow. So I would say, I, I like to answer that question in two ways, if you don't mind. So sure. I would say that my most significant achievement uh, in terms of uh, the impact to the organization is um, I actually spearheaded um, a project sales reps quoting in-house. So they were once quoting using a, uh, an offline tool. And, okay. and basically when they quoted the customer uh, product, uh, they could quote at any price. And when it comes in-house, then it's not something that we could actually sell it to uh, at that price. And okay. so um, my department actually spearheaded a, 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 a project to put a quoting system uh, back in, in, in the hands of the organization where it, the sales rep actually had to go through an approval process before they actually quoted something to a customer. And so that was huge. It allowed us to get control of our pricing. We now have strategic pricing. And um, that has actually driven more profit to our bottom line. Got it. Amazing. Yeah. So, so they're not sort of uh, running rogue in terms of the pricing that they're offering. They're actually following a protocol and a process that they need to abide by. Yes, that is correct. Got it. Um, in terms of performance evaluation systems um, to track customer satisfaction, what, um, what, what do you, how do you sort of monitor that to, to sort of, um, you know, measure the, the satisfaction rate? So, um, we, well, first off, let me just say this, and I, this is just a shameless plug, but I'm going to say it anyway, but we are a JD Power certified organization. We've been certified for the past eight years and okay. um it, congratulations and so we're there we're, thank you we're very proud of that and and so that's one way we measure customer satisfaction we have a third party vendor to come in to say uh talk to our customers to find out you know how satisfied are you with that uh, with the customer uh experience mm -hmm. um so we um have that in place as well as we also use a third party vendor when we um, they actually send out surveys when customers call for the daily transactions. And so we send out surveys, customers give us feedback on just how they felt about that transaction. And what we measure, we have three, four uh, KPIs that we measure, and it's customer satisfaction, uh, customer effort score, uh, first call resolution, and our net promoter score. So those are the things that really keep us in alignment with our customers. And, and if you don't mind me asking, what is your NPS? Oh, wow. I, you know what? Our NPS uh, on the scale of one to four, um, our, our, we're at uh, 3.6%. So we're pretty, we're pretty high up there. That's, that's amazing. And in terms yes. of the, 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 the survey that you send out and the feedback that you get, um, mm -hmm. You know, I'm sure not all of it's glowing. I'm sure a lot of it is. But those that, that sort of give you sort of critical feedback or negative feedback, what, what is the protocol then? How do you evaluate that and what do you do with it? Yeah. Well, you know what? This, it's so funny that you say that. I, when I actually pour it into that data, I'm looking for the customers that are unhappy because those are the customers that make us better. 
And so we do have a protocol when we get uh, a customer that gives us anything less than a nine. Those mm-hmm. are the customers that we actually reach out to and mm-hmm. we try to figure out what could we have done better uh, to improve that experience. And so we get a little deep into customer effort. That is one of the areas that we really focus on because that is where when customers de- decide to defect, when companies make it tough for them to do business with them. Mm-hmm. So we do have a protocol. We look at that data on a regular basis. And when we uh, figure out uh, that insight, what is every, whatever that we need to do to fix that problem, we put a team of people together and we go after that problem. Love it. That's, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. That's, that's a great approach. Um, what, what is the empirical link between customer satisfaction and customer retention, in your opinion? Yeah. So and, and the empirical link between customer satisfaction and retention really is customer effort. Listen, customers do not want to have to go through a lot to do business with you. They want it to be easy. They want you to be able to resolve their problems. And that is when customers become loyal. And it's not about, you know, uh, wowing the customers. I know a lot of people, you know, years ago, it was all about how do you wow your customers. Customers are, they want you to solve their problem. And so there is the empirical link to retention is how well you solve the customer's problems. And not just how well you solve their problems, but Mm -hmm. how do you understand their problems? How How do you stay ahead of? Of the game? How do you tell them about some of the things that they're not even aware of? So uh, I believe that when you're, when you are diving into your data, you want to pull out insights and, and give back information to customers that they're unaware of. And because right. that's going to help them to stay better. Great point. And, and so relevant to my next question, which is there's a cost to keeping unhappy customers in the pipeline, you know, not churning. So how does that compare to the cost of finding new customers? How do you balance that? Is, is there a formula there or is, are you trying to always satisfy customers that aren't happy? So, um, so as far as the, the, the cost, and, I'm, I'm gonna, and, and this is kind of something that I talk about in my book. Um, I am a strong believer that a customer should never feel the company's infrastructure. They should only feel their brand. So, mm-hmm. uh, and so brand. to directly, yep. to, yes, your brand. So to d- directly answer your question, as far as the cost, the, the, the cost is really um, based, uh, really it, it, it's based on um, how the company sets up their infrastructure from the beginning. So if you set up an infrastructure that's beholden to the customer versus the company, then you're, you, you take care of your costs at the foundational level. So, which means that um, you want to put um, pro, uh, programs and systems in place that works for the customer and the employee. Mm-hmm. You want to put in programs and, um, and systems in, in place uh, that will help the customer to be able to get the information that they need as quickly as possible. So, mm-hmm. if you offer three or four channels to your customers, make sure that that channel that the customer is going to, that they're able to solve the problem. So, that is the first thing, building the right foundation. Um, as far as when you don't do that, then that is when customers defect mm-hmm. and it costs a lot more money to actually, uh, to actually try to uh, win a customer back or yep. even to go out and get a new customer after you lost one. 100%. Makes sense. Uh, um, okay, I'm going to shift gears for a little while. Um, sure ask some questions that are not completely relevant to your job, a little more fun. Uh, So if you have a superpower, what would your superpower be? Oh, wow. Okay. So can I have more than one superpower? Uh, Absolutely. I have have three superpowers and my um, three superpowers are resilience, creativity, and high energy. And, and, and I tell you, to be a service leader, you really have to be resilient because you, you're, you're getting knocked down constantly and you have to let things just roll off of you, shake it off and move on. And my high energy, it just really keeps me going and it keeps that 
creativity going. They actually call me the energizing bunny in the office because <laughs> I'm, you know, when I say sometimes I'm, I'm running to meetings, I'm literally running to meetings. So that would, I would say that those are my superpowers. That is what really keeps me going on a daily basis. Have you always been resilient? Is that just part of your nature or have you sort of built that muscle over time? I would say that I've always been resilient. Um, mm -hmm. and, and what I've done is the muscle was there. What I've done is I've tamed that muscle because my resilience didn't go over well with my team all the time because Marion was always ready. Let's go, 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 go. And, um, and sometimes I would have to wait until the, the, the team catches up. So they've actually helped me to tame my resilience. And so I think it's, it's, it's better for, for the, the company and better for my team members. Got it. Okay. Um, do you have any rituals or daily habits that keeps you focused and productive? I do. You know, when I get up every morning and um, I, you know, the first thing that I do is just wake up and I do, I thank God for just waking me up in the morning and gratitude. Uh, that's important to me. It's just spending, spending my time um, in the morning with God. That's the first thing that I do. And then uh, I, I always adopt some, a theme song. And my theme song this year is this is me. But, and you probably saw from the showman. Um, mm -hmm. And I love that song because I think that we have to be comfortable living in our own skin. We have to be comfortable with who we are. And you know what? This is me and I am not going to be ashamed of who I am. I have high energy. Um, they sometimes call, call me the cheerleader, but you know what? That's who I am. And that's what helps me to get the results that, that, that I need to, to, to go after. I love that. I mean, you're, you're an inspiration. No doubt. And Thank it's you. a great, it's a great song. Great movie. My, my daughters both love that song. And so a uh, great choice for a theme song of the year. I think my, my theme song changes weekly, <laughs> but uh, yes. it's great. You have one for the year. Yes. Um, uh, let's see. So in terms of the culture, talk about the culture at, at the organization. How, 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 what's that like and how important is culture to you? Company culture. Wow. So the, cult, I, well, first off, I love the culture here. Um, I love our purpose. We're not just, and I, and I hope this is no offense to, you know, other companies, but we're not selling pencils and papers. Um, we are basically selling product that's going to change the quality of people's lives. And that means a lot to me, being able to give back to humanity. And so our purpose is to give back to humanity by producing products that are innovative and that's going to change quality of life for people. So, um, so as far as the culture, it's a very caring culture, um, and I love that. It's a, a culture with there's a, there's a lot of integrity, and um, and I am really big on that as well. And so I just I, I love the fact that it's a we're a mid sized mid sized company, mm -hmm. but it feels more like a family environment, mm -hmm. and um, and so I, I love that people really care not just about the company, but they care about the employees. And so I just can't even see myself working for an organization that just don't have those attributes. So that's what, what I really love about this company. I, I think it's great to, to sort of believe in the purpose and that's something that you can get really get behind. Because again, I think that goes back to my, my earlier question, which is what excites you every day, right? If you know mm -hmm. you're giving back and you're making a difference and you believe in that purpose, I mean, that, that can uh, make a huge difference in terms of, uh, you know, how you stay engaged and plugged into the organization that you're with. Yes. Um, are you seeing any trends uh, in customer support in the industry that, that really excites you uh, in the future? Well, yes. <laughs> you know, the trend that excites me the most, I know this is kind of maybe cliche, but honestly, and maybe it's not, but you know what excites me the most is that customers are so smart today and i just love it and that trend is 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 just continue it's going to grow because the more information that they have in their hands then you know what it empowers them and it forces companies to do what's right for the customer and i just think that what you know we're here you know when companies open their door they're open their door to solve a problem for a customer and they need to make sure that they're beholden to that 
that, that customer. And I love the fact that customers are forcing companies to be beholden to them. Love it. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, that's all the questions I have. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to add or anything that we missed that you want to touch on? Uh, no, I'm, I'm just, hey, first off, just thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to, um, uh, to interview with you guys. I'm um, really excited about uh, what I do, just being able to share that with the world. So um, yeah, I just appreciate the, the opportunity. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, Marion Favors, Director of Customer Support from Carl Stores in Scopy America. Check out her new book, Service Revolutions, which is available on Amazon. Marion, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it and have a great rest of your day. This is Rajiv right. from Center Stage signing off. Until next time.